Continuing our 75th anniversary of the Idaho National Laboratory, I am outside the Secure Access Facilities Building at the INL in Idaho Falls, where inside they have thousands of archives that have been preserved over the years. We're going to talk to a couple of archivists and learn about nuclear reactor history. This right here is a collection of um, radiation detectors, um, kind of a snapshot over time of some of the different ones. These are test models. This one's pretty light, like yeah. you were saying. This one's kind of heavy, and then this... That's just a newer style with the wand, kind of like what you'd see out at uh, the Experimental Breeder Reactor 1 Museum. If there were, if it detected a high amount of radiation, this needle would go up. That needle would go up and you'd get, you'd get something coming out of here. That's a speaker, what we call ATRC, which is the Advanced Text Test Reactor. This is the equipment that they had out there for a long time. I, th I think they did the changeover around 2020. Turn on the reactor there and you can turn it back off, you know, and you've got all these buttons. Now I don't, I'm not a control operator, so there's probably, I know there's a lot more to it, but like yeah. this is the on off reactor key. This is the set of keys that they use for that. This is a model of the engineering test reactor. When this was operational, this, this uh, control rod here would actually move up and down. And so we're going to work to try to get that functional again and all these lights will light up. This is the original audio? Yes. When you would turn this on? Mm-hmm. This is what you'd hear. This cross-section model of the engineering test reactor depicts the core, pressure vessel, and shielding. So it's giving instructions to the, to the operators. It tells how this, how this reactor worked. How the, you know, the cooling came in, how the cooling system worked, how the control rods worked, where folks were situated. In the EBR2 reactor, they have uh, two spots on there, BFTF and INSAT, and those were for, uh, those are ports where they could put in experiments. And so this right here is a mock-up of what they would have used. So they would have had their experiments that went inside of this, and it would have been a big, long uh, contraption. This is just the, the top portion of it. And so they would be able to grab this and set it down into the reactor uh, to have the, those materials exposed to the radiation inside the reactor and then they could pull it out and uh, send it through their hot shop out there and check to see what happened with that fuel. How did it hold up to that radiation? Mm -hmm. And this right here, um, these, they attach to the top. So um, if you didn't have that piece there, it would look kind of like that. So the, the um, fuel rods are a bunch of little pins like this and inside of these right here, this is a, a, a demonstration one as well, would be fuel pellets, kind of like that, but obviously a little smaller than this one. Um, and so those would end up going in, inside of this and they, they're clipped in. You mentioned this pellet. It says on the package of this pellet, if you could actually use this, it could power your house for three months. That, that's pretty impressive. I think now could actually produce even more energy for use. So you could light a whole city uh, for a year on just one one pellet, a little bit bigger than that. That type of research is some of the things that we've we've done out here and, and I'm sure continue to do. If you'd like to learn more about specific items in the archives or take a tour, you can contact the INL at tours at INL.gov. In Idaho Falls, I'm Rhett Nelson, eastidahonews.com.